Hey everybody, what is up? I hope you're having a great day in whatever part of the world you're in. Um, look, today's episode, well, hold on. If you're new to this show, this thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you. Number two, you look, you know what we do on the show? We talk about building a business, building your business. Whether you have a tech startup or a real estate startup, you're a, you're a, you're a, or, you're, or look, maybe you want to take it from 50 deals to 200 or or a thousand. We cover all that in this show. Um, so today's episode, what we talk about, this is uh, the girl that, that I have on the show. Um, she's a millennial. Um, she uh, kind of interesting story. She has, uh, she joined a boomer um, and they are the number one team in Boston. Here's what we talk about. We talk about finding a mentor, how she found a mentor, how you should find a mentor. We talk about building the right team and hiring for your weaknesses. We talk a lot, you know, she, she got her start in marketing. So we talk about marketing as always. I, I bring up their, her disc profile and, and we briefly talk about that. Um, we talk about also, you know, look what you don't know about top producers. Um, we, we also, again, getting into marketing, we talk about why your messaging should be tailored to your audience. Now, when I talk about this, it's message market match. Uh, message market fit, however you want to say that. But you know, if you're talking, you, you shouldn't create an email, uh, a one size fits all email. You shouldn't create a one size fits all flyer, well, one size fits all ma mailer. You need to you go and segment your database um, when they're buyers. Talk with them with that in mind. If they're sellers, if they have own a condo, if single family, whatever it is, get to their native environment, use that kind of language when you're marketing to them and however you want to do that, even in phone calls. Um, and why the, the you, you always, with any kind of marketing piece or anything, you should always have a clear call to action and why most people fail to do that. Uh, and we also, you know, she this girl is a millennial, late, late part of the millennials. Um, and, uh, you know, we talk about why you guys – Everybody should really strive to get out of their comfort zone when it comes to technology. So that's it. Um, look, hashtag for the show is unpack that idea. Uh, we have a very, very uh, strong Twitter tribe. Um, uh, use it, and uh, it's a big follow train. Uh, my Twitter handle, I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, is just super a at Super Agents Live. Um, I've taken the show name for my, my Twitter handle. Um, and uh, look out there, whether you're in Denver or Dallas or DC, listings are tough to get. And obviously you want to be on the listing side. You know what? Radio. That's how you get listings. Radio, man. Um, it's not as expensive as you think. And it literally with a one sixty second 60 second uh, commercial, you can reach tens of thousands potentially hundreds of thousands of people, depending on what market you're in, right? If you're in a Chicago with nine and a half million people, you're going to hit 300,000 people with your message. So, you know, uh, when it comes to, to getting, talking to the right demographic, radio is the, the number one way. You guys know this if you listen to the show. So go to realestateradioexperts.com. If you're interested, you know, check out some of the videos and fill out the Getting Started page. Um, give me a little background. Let's, uh, let's see if radio is right for you. All right. Hey, let's get to the show. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, one quick, quick thing. I, want you, I, I don't want you guys to miss future episodes. So if you want to stay up to date with future episodes like this one, you, you want to go to my site, superagentslive.com, download my free ebook called How to Sell, and uh, you know, you, you'll get on the list. Um, last thing here, if you are leveling up, and you know you need some help. Speaking of finding a mentor, because that's what we do talk about in this. You know what? You can find a mentor. You can hire a coach. Uh, Bob Corcoran out there at Corcoran Coaching loves what we're doing out here. We're, we're good friends. Um, and for my audience only, he will give you a free – not Bob. He'll, I think Bubba will do it. Uh, he'll give you a free session. Um, and figure out, uh, you know, kind of, kind of get a sense of where your business is and and if they can help you or not. So, uh, look, it's a free session. Normally, you know, these things cost like five hundred bucks. So, um, go ahead and call, or I'm sorry, send an email to Bubba at CorcoranCoaching dot com. Let him know you listen to the show and uh, let me know how it goes. All right, let's get to Allison Socha. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. 
This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. By the way, <clears throat> on the show today, I'm excited to talk to today's guest. Now, today's guest is uh, they're in Boston. They're the number one team in Boston. Okay, so we're going to talk about how they got to number one. Now, they're not a you know they're not you know a lot of times as you guys know we bring on people with mega teams, 40, 50 people. This is a this, these guys are lean and mean. Um, a, five agents. That's it. Two admin. Those guys are working like crazy. Um, now, they're in Boston, as I said, uh, and, and they're not, you know, they're putting up a little bit north of 100 deals, 100 deals a year. So, um, yeah, good size, but not, you know, not 250 or 500. So I'm thrilled to welcome Allison Socha. Hey, Allison, thanks for taking the time out today. I'm glad to be here with you. So listen, before we – I want to get into how you guys do things and, and how you're the number one uh, uh, team in Boston. But before we get there, Allison, I always like to get to know who you are. Like what – you know, who is Allison? Who is the girl behind the machine? So take a minute. Tell us a little bit about you. Absolutely. I'm glad to do so. So I've been a realtor for 11 and a half years, and prior to that – during my college years, I was a member of the administrative and marketing team within our brokerage. And while busily taking care of those parts of the business, I saw what went into really being a real estate agent, being an excellent broker, and providing the right services for your buyers and sellers. So I went into this with my eyes wide open, unlike a lot of realtors out there today. Mm -hmm. And I've been really fortunate to work with uh, Linda Okanefsky, so we're the Linda O and Allison team, and I've known Linda nearly all of my life, hmm. so we have a great working dynamic, and uh, to be part of something that was been 25 years in the making, Linda was originally partnered with her mother, Peg Body, and uh, we've just kind of been able to grow and continue to improve the strategies and kind of really systems that we've put in place so that we can create a really formidable team that's able to manage all of the transactions as well as uh, mentor agents on our team along. And so I'm someone who benefited from it, and now I'm helping lead the charge. Okay. All right. So um, 25 years in the making. We're going to get into that because I think there's going to be some some residue, some residual uh, that's helped you to get your 100 transactions. But so out of that 100 – um, give me just a percentage buyers, sellers. Sure. We're probably 60, 40, uh, sellers to buyers. Okay. We're really fortunate to have an amazing team who works with us, but we know our listings are our bread and butter. Yeah. Okay. Now you came, you, 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 uh, what school did you go to and what did you focus on in college? I attended Boston university. Mm. Uh, I was a Madeira scholar there and my, I have a BA in political science. Poli sci. Got it. Yep. I uh, dreamed of being a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sociology. So it, it, look, you, you know, when you don't, when you go to school and you want to get out easy, normally it's like sociology or poli sci. So, so, uh, <laughs> um, so okay. So you, you didn't have any marketing background, but you, after college, you joined the marketing side of the broker. Um, what, exactly. what, and I'm getting, and by the way, like just, uh, I, this is a little bit off topic, but so have you taken the, the disc profile? Do you know your profile? <clears throat> Do I know my profile? Yeah. Do you know your profile? I don't. Okay. That's fine. I, I mean, I'm getting this. I, I, I think you're, you're high eye for sure. Um, but I, again, a lot of times the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, whatever your, you know, your personality will determine sort of what side of the transaction you're on and what you're good at. So I was, just, I was curious about that. But uh, so mm -hmm. what did you do? You have this poli sci background. Um, why would somebody hire you to be part of the marketing team with no, with no background in that? Sure. Uh, so part of it is uh, work ethic. And part of it, I think, was the ability to actually make something happen. Um, as I'm sure most people who are listening to this show know, hiring the right administrative and marketing team 
people who are go-getters and people who are willing to put in the hours to make something happen and people who actually can take a concept and make it a reality. Mm-hmm. They're not, they don't just fall right off trees these days. Um, you have to cultivate it. And I was fortunately having known Linda and her knowing my skill set, having volunteered in the community and being part of local kind of um, political activism, that type of thing. I, I understood what needed to happen for all of that. And then it's just a question of staying abreast of all the trends and making sure that um, those projects get executed. Right. Absolutely. I mean, execution is everything. Now, um, if you don't mind me asking, I'm, I'm curious because because this is going to tie into the, the the sort of marketing strategies that you, that you have improved. You said you improved strategies. How old are you, Allison? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Okay, so you're you're just on the entail of the millennials. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so so what you you joined the broker, you're in the back end, you got to see what you know, you got to see sort of an inside look of what what makes people successful prior to going out and, and selling. Now, what what are some of those things that you saw that uh, maybe a lot of people who 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 don't have that background and they jump into selling real estate that they don't know? Sure, um, I think there's people are surprised that in order to be a really successful realtor, or successful team, there's a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, what we've found is that we're the agents who are working in between the kind of late winter holidays, between uh, Christmas and New Year's. And we're in there getting ready for the spring marketing, sending letters to our past clients, sending letters to this past year's um, market analysis, etc. cetera. Uh, that's a big part of it. The other part, I think, is making sure that you're always uh, kind of working towards an innovative strategy to put your clients in the best position. I think a lot of people think they can just mail it in. And it's a question of being open to new ideas and also being a problem solver. At the end of the day, I really look at this like we're high level problem solvers. It's about finding win win solutions for everybody and then also being able to have a team of resources available to help those clients as they continue to move along. Yeah, no, I, I think that's true. I, mean, I think everything you said is true uh, once you get into the transaction. But you can have all those mm-hmm. skills. You can have a be a problem solver. You can, you know, again have all those skills. But if, if no, if you're not at the closing table, right? How do you get uh, on marketing? And this is why I kind of jumped in there because mm-hmm. you were in the marketing side. Uh, did you learn anything about marketing that makes a, a successful agent? Sure, I think it's short, sweet to the point, Mm -hmm. Um, having something that has a call to action Mm -hmm. for the consumer and also trying to be in tune to what it is that they might be looking for. So when you're seeking seller clients and you're sending out mailers, uh, whether it be letters or postcards or personal notes, it's creating that value proposition for them. So what's most important to sellers and when it's working with buyers either reaching out to big apartment complexes or the buyers whom you've met at open houses, et cetera. It's about letting them know what differentiates you and mm-hmm. how you can improve their transaction. Yeah, no, no. And I think, I think you, t- I, was, I want to bring something out really quick because you touched on something that's really, really important when it comes to marketing. You said that um, you, you talked about sort of copy. You said short and sweet. That's one thing. But you said have a clear call to action. And I and I think again for the audience, you know, there's mark there, there's the, 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 what you're bringing out, Allison, is the difference between marketing and advertising. You know, marketing is about brand building. Advertising is we have this product. Call us now, right? It's direct response, like call to action. So, w- in, in terms of that, Allison, what are some of the things? Uh, and maybe I don't know if you want to address that. Your thoughts on the, on the differences between marketing and advertising? I think too many people use those things interchangeably. Sure, I, I, I do think that creating a consistent brand, you know, kind of reminding people what it is that sets you apart, and um, kind of starts to build trust in whatever way you can. I think that's an, I think that's kind of the key element to that mm. part of things. Uh, and if, uh, okay, so so in terms of, of outbound, uh, you know, building trust, getting you know, making impressions, getting people to know who you are that maybe didn't know you, you know, what are some of the things that you do today as a you know as the as a millennial, you know, in this business or again in tail of the millennials, um, you know, w- w- what did you bring to this to this uh, this partnership that that was lacking prior to you joining? Sure, I think that. Uh, the end of the day, there's a 
kind of tech savvy part to all of this that's not scary to those people who are in that generation and moving forward Mm -hmm. that can sometimes, uh, you know, be a bit of a challenge to some other, uh, other parts of our generational kind of family, if you will. And I think that the other element is just that kind of the, the differentiation between the baby boomers who are seeking people who have shown great accomplishments and and kind of knowing where they've been on that end of things, being able to respond to those newer buyers, those newer sellers who are information gatherers and who are trying to find someone who helps them identify um, their needs. They don't, they'll take direction well once they recognize that you are a great resource for them and that there there is some sort of uh, kind of established trust. But if you haven't, until you reach that point, they're not, sold on you and that's just something that's inherently part of who I am uh, because that's who I am and that's part of where my friends are where my family is as, as you uh, as you kind of blend your strengths together so so I'm not sure that I completely exactly got what you're saying but so are, are you saying mm-hmm. that that you know um, you brought a, a, some tech savviness to to this partnership I, yes <laughs> good <laughs> well, I mean, so um, again, so like, um, I, I, so I, I think you were alluding to the fact that you're millennial and Linda, your partner, is a boomer. Is 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 that correct? That would be correct. Okay. So, so what again? Like, t- maybe c- if you could talk about some specifics. What what are some of the specific things that you brought to brought to this that that where you think you've you know you've been able to have a positive impact on on either sales or or the customer experience. Well, I think at the end of the day, uh, there's where fortunately she and I are of are of uh, kind of similar mindsets mm-hmm. about most aspects of, of the business. I think it's about creating that right. And I use the term value proposition, and I don't mean it's you know it's it's just such a basic thing. But at the end of the day, um, kind of being a little more app friendly being able to respond to the, the buyer clients, being up on a lot of those technological advances that yeah. they're seeking, you know, knowing about the apps first, knowing about the opportunity to use DocuSign, DotLoop, um, those types of transaction management. One of the things that I've had clients say helped differentiate us was that we used e-signature products and that we were quick to respond via text, email, phone, whatever it was with the kind of needed or wanted in that scenario. It's about being able to share notebooks within Evernote even Mm -hmm. um, so that you could stay abreast of of what your client is looking for uh, as as they kind of mature through the buyer process. On the listing side of things, it has more to do, I think, with being open to some of the new trends that are coming along in the open house pro and as realtor.com continues to develop as truly as Zillow, et cetera, those kind of places and being responsive to that end. I, I think that, um, because I'm a consumer myself that way, that's something that I fully understand. And, and maybe, maybe, um, I don't know if you can maybe share some of those, some of those apps that, uh, cause look, if you, if NAR came out right recently, you know, mm-hmm. the average agent is a woman that's 57 years old. A 57 year old woman, and this, not a, this, I, I shouldn't have said that. A 57 year old, right? They have a hard enough time mang- wrangling their email, much less, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. knowing what Evernote is and how to use it. Um, and even though that's, it's basically a note taking app, but, um, so what are some of the apps that, that you're, you're implementing into the, the sales process today that has been helpful for you? Sure. The, we're in the middle right now of creating our own app mm. that is going to be for our clients. It's a direct uh, resource app where we're able to put in our um, our trusted affiliates, the contractors that we use, the plumbers that we use, all those people, and we can give that out now to our clients so they'll be able to log right in and, and get that information from them. Uh, the other one that we are on the verge of starting to use is that it's a really cool app where your buyers and your sellers are able to automatically send out a 
change of address to everybody in their contact world hmm. um, so that they don't have to just go to the post office and hope for the best or send out a mass email to anybody. It'll automatically generate that for them. Um, and, and just, I think those two right there seem to be the biggest part of it. Aside from having your own mobile website and making sure that your app is mobile, um, I think that's a, a major part of it. And then on top of that, as you said, Evernote is a big way for me to be able to connect with my clients so that we can um, move. I don't bring listing sheets with me any longer to appointments. I download them all to my Evernote, and then I'm able to share them with my clients through the folders within the app. That's great, man. I I, I, I love that. Uh, I love that you're creating an app. Um, um, now, who's who's? I, I I have to imagine that was your idea. Um, what? It's a team effort, always. Okay. All right. Well, that's okay. Um, so and and so uh, again, are you taking the charge in that? Are you um, meaning? Are you finding somebody at, at Elance or how how mechanically? How are you getting sure. that? Sure. Um, so fortunately, it's um, we have an amazing educational component within our brokerage and we have a lot of great collegial sharing. So when somebody finds something new, we can all talk about it. So Dizzle is actually the people that we're using to help us create the app on um, concierge. Fizzle. Dizzle. And with an F. D as in dog. D is in dog. Dizzle. Okay. Uh, yep. I, I know the guys at Fizzle. I don't know the guys at Dizzle. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah. So, um, Again, you, I'm, 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 I'm glad that it's you that um, we, you know, for the audience, Linda, her partner was sp- scheduled to do this interview, and at the last minute, she, she couldn't show. So I got Allison, and I'm glad Allison, I got you. Um, what are you doing? Anything? Um, because you're, you know, because you're tech savvy, um, are you doing, uh, you know, g- uh, uh, Google pay per click campaigns or Facebook ads, or what, what are you doing in terms of trying to drive leads uh, in, a, uh, in the digital world? Sure. Uh, we are on the verge of uh, kind of commencing our first Facebook ad campaign. Mm. Um, we had prior to that used the we outsourced the Facebook ad part of things, and it was costly and it really was not producing any sort of result. Yeah. So we've taken it over ourselves, and right now our um, our, our team coordinating our team coordinator who handles all of our kind of the day to day operational listing marketing. Um, we have that just about ready to roll out for first of, first of March. So we'll be doing Facebook ads and um, also um, considering AdWorks. Um, AdWords or did you say AdWorks? AdWorks with the X. Oh, what is that? I'm, I'm not doing it. Look it up. Uh, sure. So they're actually kind of a, a, a mass, um, mass marketing firm. Um, that will help you hone your message. You can use them in a, you can deploy them in a variety of ways. So, um, we're in talks with them right now to see what they can do for us. Got it. Um, my ad works. Okay. And give me real quick, give me your, give me your, 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 uh, team, uh, website. Sure. It's agentexpertise.com. Now, uh, dot com okay so i put an l in there um so you're doing some facebook ads what else are you doing in the in the offline world um to to drive uh, to drive uh, leads for you guys sure uh so we have just started a campaign to two local condo complexes huh. uh reaching out to them just because of the market in boston we have a very tight inventory um, but as the, the condo market is starting to rebound, so it's a good time for, for those people to consider selling. Um, and part of that is as the kind of upper generation start to right size and, and get rid of those larger houses, but they're not quite ready to go into some sort of direct community living, having a, uh, kind of a, a one level condo and an elevator building, et cetera, becomes a lot more attractive to them. Um, additionally, it's a good opportunity for us to start reaching out to those, those potential kind of, uh, the, the people who are moving up inside those condo complexes. So that's one of our programs that we'll be starting here for, uh, as, as the second quarter of the year commences. And right. then additionally, mm-hmm. no, no, go ahead. I don't, I'm sorry. Okay. And then additionally, we, uh, have a program in place that we're going to be 
sending this year to um, blanket sellers in our community so that they will, will, will kind of be a constant presence to them. Um, lightly, we host team home buyer, home seller seminars, and we reach out to the sellers in that way. Um, so that they can see that that's kind of part of our service model. We want to make sure that they're educated, that they're making good investments in their house. We let them know that uh, kind of taking steps now, so when you renovate your kitchen, do it with an eye to the future if you think you'll be selling on the sooner side rather than the later side. And that's also part of the marketing campaign. For the for the, for those uh, condos, okay. So you're yep. you're targeting those condos. What what does the full breadth of that look like? How, how do you, Allison, how, when you say, "Hey, I'm going to target this condo complex," two things. Sure. One, what goes into choosing a particular complex, and mm-hmm. two, what are all the pieces to that? Sure. So for for our purposes, we would prefer something that was an elevator complex and also something that has uh, 25 plus units because then you're consistently marketing to, you know, some place that has some potential for turnover. Yeah. Um, And it's going to be a monthly reach out. Um, We don't want to, I don't want to annoy them. Sure. Yep. <laughs> um, and and really, it's going to be kind of quick. Are you watching the market? Um, bullet points. Not anything. It doesn't need to be a, a chapter and verse thing, because we look at this like most of the advertising, the marketing that people receive in the mail, throwaway pieces. So we want to have something that catches their eye, that will speak to them, so that when they get it and before they throw it in the trash, they at least are consistently seeing something from us that has potential use use for them. And so, and so I guess, so it's just a mailer. All you're doing is mailing out once Mm -hmm. a month. That's right. Okay. That's what, that's kind of what we're going to try. Okay. And Uh, then we'll invite all those people to our seminar as well. uh, uh, um, A move up seminar. You said it earlier, but I, I don't. Sure. So we have, it's a home buyer, home seller seminar. So for the buyers, it's trying to help them buy savvy. And for the sellers, it's letting them know what the profile of today's buyer is and then also what steps should they take to help prepare their house to market. It's not about if I'm selling in six months, although that, of course, works. It's more like, hey, even if you're selling in three to five years, if you're getting ready to retire or kids are graduating from college and maybe you don't need the same size house anymore, what steps can you start to take now that will help you be prepared for then? Got it. Now, so so are you are you creating? I I don't think you are, but I'll just ask this because um, maybe it's a good. Maybe it's it's something you want to do. Um, here's what I'm seeing when people tar- when when people are targeting an area, whether it's their farmer or 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 you know, but they're but they're specifically targeting a neighborhood or area, you know, a, a, um, whatever. Um, they're building out to, to get people engaged. They're, they, you know, they've gone. They've built out uh, Facebook groups for for that for that area, right? For that subdivision sure. yep. or whatever. Yep, that's very popular. Yeah. So, um, so you're you're familiar with that. Now, you, 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 for you, that's not a piece. I, integrating a digital piece with the offline piece is not something. Sure. So where we are just outside of of downtown Boston. The community is on a smaller side of things, so we're not one of those places. And, and most of New England tends to fall in this category. There aren't a lot of subdivisions where we are. Um, it's a community that's only four square miles. It's got 28,000 residents. So everybody is part of really one big space. And um, there's no real, real clearly defined area like that. Um, okay. We don't have a neighborhood that would be able to kind of turn into the, you know, Tri Valley wine enthusiast or something like that. That's just kind of not part of our makeup. Okay. Now, so look, I mean, you've been at this a, a decade, right? Eleven and a half years. Mm-hmm. You you got, uh, you know, you got to see it from from the the back end of the office before you got into the front piece and started, you know, selling stuff. You know, what for that person out there that is maybe uh, two years into it, or maybe you know, maybe thinking about going full time or whatever it might be. You know, what's what's a piece of advice that that you know today that you're, you're you know you learned along the way and you're like, oh my god, if, if I would have known that. It would have changed everything. Sure. I think there's a couple of elements to that. One is 
talk as much as you can to the more seasoned agents in your office. Um, I think that the opportunity to talk to them and understand where they've been and how they got there is a really, really important part of being able to grow as a realtor. Uh, and I also think uh, education, making sure that you stay uh, kind of open to that, attend all the training in your office, make sure that you go to your local association and check out the class options. Um, th- those things certainly help to me, but I think the other part of it is never close the door. Always be open. And I think that a lot of people want to do it the way they've always done it, but you really can't afford to do it that way anymore. The world changes at the drop of a dime and you need to be ready for it. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Listen, okay, we're going to start wrapping up. I appreciate you coming on. So I'm going to ask you some of this, the, the same three questions that I ask everybody, okay? So here, okay. Here's, <laughs> here's the first one. And I, I think I have a sense of what your, your, might, your answer might be. But so for you, Allison, as you've, as you've developed uh, you know, as a real estate agent, as you've developed as a, you know, a, a, a person with a, a career, who has been a mentor to you? Sure. Uh, at the end of the day, Peg and Linda have probably been the people who are most responsible for helping me mature as a realtor and uh, be open to every possibility that I can take advantage of. Got it. Yeah, and and I, I figured that was the case. Now, um, I didn't ask you this. But this is I'm backing up for a second. So, so Linda's been in business for 25 years. Okay, so she's been at this okay. a long time before you, you, you got in here. Um, how has that, how has, uh, in term, to get to that 100 deals, how much of that is uh, uh, referrals or past clients? Sure. Um, I, at the end of the day, we're probably, we're, we're close to, I, I would think actually 50, 50. There's a lot of brand recognition around town just by having your kind of signs flopping in the breeze. Uh, so that, that really kind of benefits us knowing that kind of we're the agents who are always going to get you more money. Um, uh, kind of our rep is you guys always have the best houses and it's no, we have the best clients, clients who are open to, um, being kind of maximizing their house. So they put themselves in the best position for a sale. Um, so I, I think that although we do a really robust referral business, there's also a lot of kind of just name recognition. Yeah. Okay. So, so if 50, so 50% of your business is, is referrals past clients. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Coming from, coming from those guys. Absolutely. So, so what are you doing to, to goose that? You know, I I think it's just that we're at at the end of the day, um, you know, we have programs that we run during the year, you know, every now and then we're just kind of thinking of you types of things, the, mm-hmm. we, the, you know, kind of hardy moms, et cetera. Um, but on top of that, we just are, um, with our, with the way that we handle our mailings, we're just kind of an ever present resource. And then I think we're simply, we respond, you know, that one of the, one of the things that people forget as a realtor, you really need to do is actually return telephone calls. And by returning a call, um, you can kind of keep people invested and they know that you're in business to be in business, that this isn't uh, just some sort of fly by night thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, that is, that is so much of it, you know, suit up, show up and answer your phone, you know? Um, <laughs> all right. So look, I always ask for a book recommendation. I'm always curious as to what people like you are reading. So here, here's the setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? I would purchase uh, E-Myth by mm. Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber. That is a great book. E-Myth Revisited 2.0. Listen, if you guys in the audience, if you have not read this book, this book is a book that will help you understand where you're at in your business. Are you a technician? Are you an entrepreneur? And a, and a lot of you guys are, probably don't know, and it'll help you get, give you sort of a, a longer-term view of, of where you're at and where you want to go and how to get there. So get a free copy on us. Just use our link, <laughs> audibletrial.com slash superagentslive, and get a free copy at Audible. So m- my last question to you, uh, Allison, is 
do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success? I do. Uh, every night and every morning, I do a kind of quick evaluation of the night of the day that just transpired and what I need to get accomplished tomorrow. And in the morning, um, just kind of revisit what I did the day before. Make sure I'm happy. What what things could I have grown from? Um, and what do I need to do differently today to improve? my situation, both personally and professionally. Got it. That's good. Hey, you know, just in speaking of books, have you read uh, uh, Hal, uh, Hal Elrod's uh, The Miracle Morning? No, I have not. You should check it out. It's It's got um, – okay. it's Yeah, you should go get a copy. Um, uh, it's pretty good. It's a quick read. You can read it in a couple hours. So, But, uh, yeah, Hal Elrod, The Miracle Morning. Um, all right. Hey, all listen. Right, I'll download that on my iPad. <laughs> well, Allison, you know, here's the deal. I always encourage uh, my audience, if they've gotten anything out of this episode, this time that I've been able to share with you, for them to reach out and say thank you to you. So, so where can people find you, Allison? Sure. Um, on Twitter, it's at Allison Sosha. Uh, email would be Allison Sosha at remax.net. And you can find us on the Agent Expertise team on Facebook. Awesome. And listen, guys, if you are driving, riding your bike, walking your dog, whatever, mowing your lawn, whatever you're doing, all this stuff will be on the show notes at Super Agents Live. So go go check it out. Look, and Allison, I'll be the first to kick off that thank you train. Hey, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day. I know it's you're out in Boston. I know it's freezing cold. You'd rather be talking with me than, than, than outside, but I appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad to be a part of something um, so, so dynamic. So thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. Well, let's, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Take care. Let's go.